Hey y'all, it's August 2nd, it's Friday evening, uh, about 6 o'clock. We had a nice uh, shower move through, a thunderstorm, and there's still some thunder rumbling in the background. Uh, so it's nice and cool out here right now. And I'm going to plant these basil plants in my herb garden. So I use a lot of rabbit manure on the farm, but I use the rabbit manure in applications where it's not, uh, it's not fully composted. So in this situation, I'm not gonna use rabbit manure because I'm using things that I'm gonna eat fresh. So I don't want uh, to chance getting a coli or something from the uncomposted manure. So anytime I plant something in my herb garden or something that I'm gonna eat fresh, like lettuce or something, I always use a finished compost. Now it may not be sifted, but it's definitely been through the process where it's been heated up and um, eaten by microbes. So here's some finished compost that I just went and got back from the compost pile. And it does have some pine straw and some straw that has fallen onto it just from where the, our compost is underneath our pine trees. So I don't know if I'll need this whole thing, but I'm gonna put maybe one inch or two inch, yeah, I use the whole thing, two inches so that I don't have to worry about fertilizing again. Um, it is warm down here this time of year and so organics tend to um, decompose pretty quickly and the uh, microbes tend to eat them up pretty quickly so and there's some tiny oh there's so many tiny worms in here the worms are doing great back there let me see if I can get a couple show them to you well, there's one look how tiny that guy is tiny several of those squiggling around in here all right, um, these are just some old pots that had marigolds in them uh, from last year, so I repurposed them. You can see on there it says French marigold. Um, obviously, they're not. This is basil. Uh, this is green basil. I have some purple basil that I started also, uh, but it's I started it just maybe a week and a half ago, so it's not quite ready to put out yet. And then um, the other thing I do when I'm planting anything is I will go ahead and cull if necessary. So you'll see right here in this corner, there's a teeny tiny plant. Look how much smaller it is than the rest. I'm not going to waste my square footage with that plant. I'll toss that plant or I'll just break up the soil that it's planted in and put it on top. And I can't forget to mention, I got this nice um, new garden trial for my birthdays for my brother. Um, he lives in Atlanta, uh, but he and his wife got this trial for me and mailed it to me, so I'm using it today. I just got it in the mail, and uh, it's from Manchester Mercantile, and it came in a cute little bag. It came in a cute little burlap bag. It's a nice trowel. Okay, so there's the first seedling. It's got really good root structure. It's not root bound yet plant that guy in there. I like to plant it up to the um, seed leaves, the cotyledons. That's where I like my soil to come up on my basil. And most of my plants actually when I plant them out. So see these funny little leaves right here? Those are the seed leaves or cotyledons. So I'll put the soil up to that point. putting these about nine inches apart. Basil can get quite large, uh, but I found that I have no way of predicting what years it's going to get large and what years it's going to stay scraggly. So nine inches, you know, if it gets too big, I'll just take more basil off and plant it, not plant it, take more basil off and dry it in the house um, to use during the winter time. So that's fine. Uh, that's an easy problem to deal with. I think these beds, I think they're either three and a half feet wide or four feet wide, maybe three. And that's a nice width for me to reach across. I really like that width. Okay, this is probably the last one that's gonna, yeah, this is the last one that's gonna fit right here. Just pressing that in really good. 
we just had a a good rain I didn't check the rain gauge but probably if I had to guess probably at about a quarter of an inch um, and it's actually sprinkling on me a little bit right now so we'll probably get some more but um, I'll still water these anyway just so I don't have to worry about it because the, actually the soil and the bottom layers that I'm planting it in is not is, is very sandy so it dries out quickly so I want to make sure that to help the seedling overcome the transplant shock that it has plenty of water to get started with. Oh, so these two I didn't plant. These are culls. Um, and if you're buying your seedlings, you might not want to cull any of them just because you spent, um, they were so expensive. I say so expensive, it's because I'm used to growing things from seed. I mean, they're not expensive. Certainly a better value to grow your own from seedlings you buy than to um, buy produce at the store. But that being said, I grew mine from seeds so I can afford to pick the very best plants. And um, by doing that, I eliminate the use. Sometimes I have to use um, organic pesticides and, and or inorganic pesticides, but I don't like to use them at all because um, I have bees so if I can if I can stack the odds in my favor so that I don't end up having to use any kind of insecticides, and that's what I do. So by picking only the healthiest seedlings to plant, um, you're, you're gonna give yourself a leg up with your pest control. Now, for some reason, the ones in here aren't, they're a lot smaller, not a lot smaller, they're probably three quarters as big as the ones in the first tray. And then their root system, see? just came right out. It didn't tear, but that's all he's got. But I'm still going to plant this one because um, it's still pretty good. And then I'll pick one more. And these have only been in these little trays for a couple of weeks. And one of the things you can do also um, just have like a butter knife or something with you that I feel tearing when I'm putting that so that's not going to be a good one but we'll see one of the problems with starting your own seedlings when they're not super root bound like what you're accustomed to at the store you can't just pull them out um I think that one's still okay yeah that one still looks really good so there's actually two in there and I'm gonna anytime you have that leave leave them both together for the first couple of weeks uh, just in case one of them dies from the transplant shock and so that way you'll have a backup and then if not the end of a couple weeks you can trim off your weaker weaker link and you're left with the strongest seedling all right so that's it I'm actually not going to mulch these yet because I don't want to encourage um, places for flea beetles to hide, which there is a little bit of flea beetle damage on these. I don't want to encourage places for cutworms or army worms to hide. So I'm going to leave the um, mulch off of this until these plants get up a little bit bigger, maybe about six or seven inches. I am going to have to water it more at first, but that's going to assist me in the pest control. Uh, the birds can see uh, worms a lot better and, and come down, the bluebirds will come down and they'll eat caterpillars and uh, different insects that are feeding off of my plants if there's not mulch in the way. So I don't want any place for those guys to hide. So we're going to leave that off for a couple weeks and uh, that's it. So I'll show you all the finished product. There you go. Isn't that pretty? Alright, so now I just need to go and uh, get my watering pail and make sure that these guys get watered in really well. Thanks for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Have a great weekend.